Okay, so this pile of gear that you see on the table is what I'm planning to bring to Desert Brutality. YouTube video isn't so much to provide information, but is to for something for me to reflect on and hear feedback back of so I can look back in the future and see all the points where I'm incredibly wrong. The purpose of this video is also to go over my thought process of, you know, things I considered before I went to my first Brutality match in terms of gear, um, performance, uh, what to do when I get there. So yeah. Let's begin. Me deciding what I wanted to run for Desert Brutality in terms of a look is I wanted to choose something a little bit LARPy and whatever set of camouflage I could get that was complete for relatively the cheapest cost. And fortunately, this British DPM uh, Desert Camouflage, this is a two color uh, sand camouflage as opposed to the earlier three or four color sand patterns. Um, this is what I was able to find the cheapest as a, as a complete set. That includes the floppy hat, a sweat rag, um, a shirt or jacket, I think it's technically called, um, these pair of pants, and this load-bearing vest. So for the load-bearing vest, um, what I could find online about it is that this is a Pattern 95. It's referred to as a general purpose uh, assault vest, referred to as an eight pocket model because of the eight pockets. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, but you do also have two internal um, kind of like in two internal pocket pockets. It uses these Spanish fly um, latches, which I believe that's what they're called, which I, I do like them. I've grown to kind of uh, to like them quite a bit. Uh, and obviously the gun to accommodate with this is an AK because the British were obviously known for wielding AKs in the field. Might as well talk about the AK first. So this is actually an AK I built from a kit. Um, originally, um, this was my second AK I've ever built um, and probably frankly, the worst AK I ever built in its original form. Um, so this thing has been rebuilt to a much higher standard than before. It originally started as a WBP Lynx kit um, and in early 2020, you could order these things with what they called the FB Radom uh, rear sight block. Later we find out, you know, kind of looking at a burial, they have these grooves and it's for the rail on top. So it's like, oh, that's really cool. But pretty much I bought a rear um, burial trunnion um, with the lug. Um, I already had a burial rail ready to go. Um, and pretty much just kind of combine these into like an AK pistol. I 3D printed an insert that goes in here that pretty much fills up this rear uh, trunnion spot so that way it can take the pistol brace adapter. The cool thing is, is that this is super tight and there's actually no screws in that piece of plastic, um, which is very cool. Obviously I did want this thing to remain a pistol. I didn't want to pay the tax stamp quite yet, but this may be, uh, we'll see how this turns out. If you put enough spring tension on this, it tends to kind of uh, bounce and, uh, bump um, but it was something where I did want to keep a lightweight rifle up front um, you know make it very very nimble as I'm as I'm maneuvering the stages and very short if I have to get in and out of, the, of a barricade or something um, you know you know not waiting to pay money for a tax stamp this was the way to go um, we'll see how long that stands now one of the guns I was thinking about running for for desert brutality is actually this um, real and this is uh, you know I kind of have the classic stock on it I would probably I would move this optic to this to this gun um, you know this one is chambered in 556 the issue I had running this rifle is mostly it's barrel um, when I was running this gun especially if I was propping up against barricades or or an obstacle or like whatever I found out like depending how far you rest on it or where you rest the barrel can throw your aim off um, about 10 MOA when I was testing it on paper um, the other thing I've noticed with these guns and I think it's this particular batch that had come in to the country recently is that this is like a um, like a 10 MOA rifle this one was getting about like five to six inches at 50 yards um, so it's so far has not been a very very good performer. I do like this gun. This gun is very good at short ranges, um, but at long ranges, it can get kind of iffy. Now, the other interesting trade-off between this shorter 7.62 rifle and then this longer 
uh, 5.56 gun is that these this this pistol is lighter um, than this rifle I think by like a, about like two pounds however if I factored in the ammunition my starting load up um, at the beginning of the day this gun this setup would actually be heavier because of the the heavier ammunition for the same round count however the more I go shooting throughout the day you know this setup actually eventually starts becoming heavier um, which is just an interesting trade-off you know between these two guns Ultimately, I did want to choose the gun that may be a little bit more accurate um, and also a, more nimble to navigate between stages because, you know, it's less weight in the gun and more weight in my bag. Um, like, I believe this was the better optimization of the two. I mean, it's also not like I had like a more, you know, competitive rifle. Um, with the optic choice, originally I was planning on running something like this. This is a Premier Arms micro dot. The vertical offset is a little bit better with the micro dot than it is with the EOTech. Um, however, just kind of like running through trying to zero this gun or zero the gun with this optic, um, I ran into a lot of problems with it and kind of maintaining an accurate zero. Um, there was like a point where I was zeroing, kind of chasing around, and then I found like I've tightened this up like a half a turn right there. Um, and then I had to start over my whole zero again. Um, where with the EOTech, that has not been an issue. Now let's talk about the pistol. So this is a CZ P07. The reason I picked this gun over my, you know, my P10 that I normally run uh, was because I did run this at a bug match before. Um, and I did notice that the recoil was a lot better. It was a lot controllable um, for follow-up shots. Um, so now this gun is Cajunized. Um, so it has a very nice uh, double action and single action pull. I had rounds that were light striking and that was because I had the medium weight 15 pound hammer spring in here, which there was a warning. Um, so the instructions for the C Cajunization process, as I will call it, um, it basically does warn that if you use the lighter springs with the Burdan primers, um, like for instance, like you'll see on Wolf or Tula um, ammunition or just Russian ammunition in general, um, you might get a lot of light strikes because that hammer doesn't have enough oomph to kind of get through that Burdan primer. Um, so I had the medium weight in there just to try it out and it just turned out to be kind of a cool um, double action simulator because uh, I was getting light strikes quite often. So in this current state here, um, I have swapped out the hammer spring for the larger uh, Cajun 18 pounds instead of 15 pounds. Um, but I've also increased, uh, I put the largest um, grip on it as opposed to the, the smallest one that they had out of the box. So it is a very nice and clean uh, single and double. So because one of the advantages of recording our matches um, between myself and my friends, like I can apply a bit of uh, that TISM or professionally known as like an engineering degree and actually take statistics on our matches. So I actually have an Excel sheet that actually plots the, of how much we miss or hit targets um, when we're taking matches. Watching Sinister Rifleman's videos, he actually, um, I can calculate his statistics and compare them with my, with my own. So under normal conditions, um, Russell will get 90% hit accuracy with a rifle and then 65% hit accuracy with a pistol under a normal match setting. Um, however, com comparing it to a brutality match video that he did, um, that accuracy drops to as low as 70% with rifle and then 45% with pistol. And what does this mean for me is that under normal conditions, my accuracy for either rifle and pistol is about 60% for both weapons. Meaning I'm probably gonna do a lot worse uh, under a brutality match condition than I would under normal two gun action match condition. So bringing an obnoxious amount of ammo, um, I just do not wanna worry about running out. I will just brunt it, carry it with me throughout all the stages. So the amount of ammo I'm fitting in here is 440 rounds of 762 by 39 and 374 rounds of nine millimeter which is a bit excessive. It's well more than I need for the estimate of 90 rounds for the whole match, but it's something I just choose to not worry about.
Okay, so stage three includes that I start in the vehicle and I have to engage these paper targets sitting in the vehicle um, with the pistol. Um, and once I engage all of these targets, um, I'll be able to grab my rifle and then go to the next stage. Now you notice here is that I'll get like a lot of misfires throughout the match today. Um, I have a medium weight spring inside the CZ when I Cajunize it, and I knew that may have not worked for the for the ammunition that I'm using, but I'm just basically using it as a life strike simulator. Okay, so I engage all the targets, I grab my gun, go to there. Um, it's occurring to me is that the first time trying to run with all the gear on that, oh my one. god, it is a lot harder to one. sprint with a lot of gear on you. So I learned this. Um, then I also learned something here um, with this pistol brace is that I've learned that if you don't have it right there, um, if you don't have it seated in your shoulder properly, the gun can bump fire and I get, I get a round that goes away from me. All right, here's where I get a penalty. Um, after I engage these targets and I go to move, um, I think it's something with my hand or something like that, but I bump my magazine out. And I just, instead of going back to retrieve it, uh, I just end up trying to put a new one in. Immediately followed by a light strike. It's a very interesting stage. <laughs> cool, cool, that was awesome. Yeah, you were skipping off the barrel. Oh, that's what was happening? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. All right, so this is stage one. Stage one, fortunately, we don't have to run very far. Um, the whole stage you perform sitting in a chair and you have your sidearm and your uh, rifle stationed next to you. And how it works- Yeah, you did the same thing I did. There is one steel silhouette with the rifle and there is um, a plate rack for the pistol. So the, so the goal is, is that you hit one, you, hit, you, you start with the rifle, hit the steel silhouette once, then transition to pistol and then get the first plate. Um, and then when you transition to pistol, your goal is to get a plate. Um, once you get a plate, if there's a consecutive plate that you miss on, you have to go back to rifle. Um, so in theory, you could do this in eight, you could do the whole stage in eight shots, but um, I miss a lot with a pistol. And frankly, I just need more practice with it. Uh, and you'll see the same thing here is that I'll start getting light strikes um, where I have to practice a double a double action trigger pulls. One thing I did really like about choosing the small AK um, for for Desert Brutality is that it makes the gun very, very small and light for me to get on a target for the steel silhouette. So that's something I very, very did much enjoy. Um, very much enjoyed uh, for this for this stage. And then one last hit. Yeah, this was I. This was my best stage of the day. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, your, your transitions were. I have I I put a lighter hammer spring in there, and I know it needs. To be Being done. Watch. Okay, stage two. Um, this was my worst stage of the day. Um, so the stage starts with an empty rifle um, and magazine and an empty magazine and ammunition loaded in a bucket. And I can see where you, you could probably figure out where this is going. So you have two options. You can either load your whole rifle magazine and then throughout the stage you can carry the bucket and the rifle with you or you can um, load just enough to get the first hits with the rifle um, on this um, 
uh, on this obstacle here, and then you can abandon the rifle and the buck at any point, um, and then and then uh, transition to your sidearm to engage for the rest of the stage. Which I think for me that maybe not have been the wisest choice. Um, reason being is that I'm not very practiced with this pistol. Um, if I think if I had the P10, um, which I normally run, this wouldn't have, have been too much of an issue. Um, but since the P07, this is kind of like, you know, not the first time I was practicing out to distance, but frankly, like I have not practiced very much out to distance. I had a very hard time with this stage. Um, the other thing that was holding me back is that uh, I had bought 21 rounder magazines um, for me to use when I go to Desert Brutality. Uh, but uh, I was, for this match, I was lending my P10 and therefore all of its magazines to another person during the match. Um, so I didn't have the ability to run my full magazine loadout that I would have desired to in, in match. So I only have these two 21 round magazines for me to go through the stage. And a, the 17 and 15 rounds uh, I just do not have on me that I would have on me for Desert Brutality. So here's the, the change. One of the reasons I do want to use this pistol um, over my P10 is that I've noticed that this is a lot better for me to control via recoil. Um, it doesn't really look like it, eh, but, it, but it, I do have a better grip on the gun overall compared to the P10. And I am out of ammunition. So pretty much I uh, well. <laughs> accumulated six whole penalties <laughs> because you're supposed to go back and shoot through the barrels and then shoot through the, shoot off the staircase um, each yeah. time. So this was my poorest stage of the day. Five, six. What the hell is going on? That was kind of weird.